Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Victoria and Cole are distraught over Claire, and Phyllis gets a glimpse of Danny and Christine. Danny discovers Christine browsing through her mail at the club. He claims to have just finished the tune on which they cooperated. He did pretty much everything, she titters. Danny compliments her on being a wonderful muse. He takes out the sample to show her. On the condition that she joins him for lunch, Chris and Danny listen to the song while wearing headphones. She tells him it's lovely. Danny ponders like the lady herself. Danny and Christine joke around over lunch. Christine claims to have the new song stuck in her mind. Danny assures her it was just a thought. Something wasn't working, but being with her gave him a push, and it all came together. Chris thinks the music is fantastic. They both believe that it should be included on his next album. Danny appreciates her words of support. He's discovered the inspiration he's been looking for in her and Phyllis. What? exclaims Chris. Has Phyllis inspired you as well? Danny Christine again. Chelsea accuses Summer of dodging her inquiry concerning the future of Crimson Lights. Summer contends that you cannot plan your own future. Or is it way past that? Chelsea could see she's intrigued in chance. Phyllis enters and asks whether she's interfering with anything. Summer claims it was merely Marchetti business, but her mother believes it was more personal. Chelsea walks away and Phyllis takes a seat. What exactly is going on? Are you still blocking my access? It irritates her that Summer does not trust her enough to tell her the truth. Summer insists that things are improving between them. Phyllis claims that when she inquires about her personal life, she be she's curious if Summer and Chelsea were discussing Sharon and Chance. Summer attempts to flee, but Phyllis stops her. What do you want from me? cries Summer. What do you want from me? screams Phyllis. She is attempting to change, but her daughter remains obstinate. How should she react to anything like that? Zenk hints at Jordan narrative. Summer confesses to lying about her conversation with Chelsea. It's almost instinctual now. She recognises she must give her a chance to succeed. Phyllis is aware that it is all about chance. Summer reiterates that she will not pursue. Phyllis is aware of this, yet the heart desires what it desires. Summer admits that she alternates between thinking she should attempt to work things out with Kyle someday and desiring chance so hard that she feels dizzy. Phyllis and Summer debate if her marriage to Kyle can be saved. Summer believes it is, and she is merely thinking about it to divert her attention away from her love for chance. Summer sighs and shrugs her shoulders. It's pointless to discuss chance because he's unachievable. No, Phyllis laughs. If there's one thing I've learnt in my life, it's that nothing is unachievable if you want it badly enough. Some of Phyllis. Billy asks Jill when she arrived in town at society. Jill clucks that she wasn't going to ghost him. She has some breathing room now and is looking forward to seeing her son. Jill wants to let him in on a little secret. I am certain Mamie Johnson is trying to pull a fast one on me. Billy inquires as to why she believes this. Jill reports that she has sided with Tucker McCall. Billy wonders why she would do anything so stupid. Jill claims Mammy is planning a move on her, and McCall is a valuable alley. Tucker, she guesses, wants to take over the company, and Mammy wants her family to lead it. How content are you working at Jabot right now? Jill asks her son. Connor Floyd's family is on set. Jill has discovered that she is outnumbered in her own company. Despite the fact that Nate's blind ambition has not gone anywhere, the Winters are considering bringing him back. She must fight fire with fire and promote members of her own family to positions of power. What do you think, baby? Would you be willing to leave Jabot to work with me at Chancellor Winters? Jill informs Billy that he may be her only hope and Chelsea joins them. She inquires whether this is a bad moment. Jill replies, Yes, and Billy responds he wants her to hear his mother's proposal. He tells that Jill wishes for him to leave Jabot and join her at Chancellor Winters. That's huge, Chelsea exclaims. 
Billy reminds his mother that he had a difficult relationship with Lily while he... Jill believes he's finally learning from his errors. Billy mumbles something about the backhanded praise. Jill is concerned about his friendship with Jack. Billy considers himself to owe him everything. Jill believes that's debatable. But she asks whether he's willing to abandon him to join forces with her. To Jill Billy. Nicky Victor. Nick. Victoria and Cole enter the ranch living room in a line. What an ordeal. Victor moans, vowing that the lunatics who did this to them will pay the price. As Victor urges that Jordan join Claire in prison, Nicky looks at the vodka bottle. Nicky had a flashback to the EV and drinking the vodka bottle she destroyed when imprisoned at the lake house. Nicky and Rick. Nicky gives Nick some water and Cole discusses the necessity to avoid alcohol for the next few days after being poisoned. They go over the women seeking vengeance for things that never happened. Victor is furious about what they've done to Nicky and Victoria thinks that it's awful. Nick continues, it's vicious. Nicky reports that the alcohol has left her system and she is feeling better. I will be fine, she assures. The toughest part is discovering she fell for Claire's ruse. Victor pledges that those two women will pay for their actions. Victoria almost feels terrible for Claire, who has been deceived her entire life. Nikki cannot believe it. She is heartless. How could she feel anything other than scorn for her? Victor believes Claire does not deserve their sympathy. Nick claims he has no sympathy for her. Victoria encourages them to consider her upbringing by that mad woman who instilled in her that they abandoned her. She grew to despise all of them. How is she not also Jordan's victim? Nick claims Claire had choices and made the wrong ones. Victoria claims Jordan has had her since birth. They're not sure if Jordan is Eve's sister at all. Cole claims his mother had a sister, but they were estranged. Victor had his guys investigate her, and the report has just arrived. Jordan is revealed to be Eve Howard's sister by Victor. She was a registered nurse with the same mother. Cole is aware that her aunt was a travelling nurse. Victor claims she briefly worked as a nurse at Memorial around the time Victoria gave birth. She then left soon after the baby died. What? Victoria exclaims. That can't be right, can it? Can Jordan be telling the truth about stealing our daughter? Everything you need to know about Cole Howard. Summer can't believe Phyllis is telling her to stop at nothing to acquire what she wants at Crimson Lights. Phyllis dislikes seeing her daughter in such turmoil. She wants her to follow her heart. There is no such thing as a dress rehearsal in life. Summer claims that her predicament isn't all that horrible. She's concentrating on her career, which is for the best. Phyllis only wants her to know she is concerned. She will not interfere, saying, You come to me next time. Summer inquires as to what is wrong with her. How is her relationship with Daniel going at Omega Sphere? Is there anything going on in your personal life? Phyllis gives a slyle and says she'll inform Summer after lunch. I Summer Danny tells Christine at the club that he has noticed Phyllis's efforts to be a better person. They chatted about new beginnings and his lyrics came together. He reasoned, give credit where it is due. Chris jokes that she'll have to split the royalties with the redhead. Danny compares them to apples and oranges. Don't compare yourself to Phyllis, I'm not. Cole can't get over Jordan brainwashing Claire for all those years at the ranch, and all of this was done because of my mother. She had to know it would devastate you as well, Victoria says. Cole is baffled by everything. According to Nikki, the woman is certifiable. They are wondering if Jordan inherited Eve's mental illness. Claire was astonished when Jordan admitted to stealing her from the hospital, according to Victoria and Cole. Cole does not believe Claire was deceived. She's convinced we're her parents, but it's just not. Victoria shakes her head. Isn't that impossible? Nikki is surprised the young lady did not question her aunt at some time. Victor believes Jordan would have foreseen this and prepared some proof. Victoria raises her hands and says, just stop. They're talking about it as if it's possible, as if Claire is theirs. So, which baby died? I apologise for not being able to grasp any of this. 
She goes out and Nicky prepares to follow, but Cole prefers to speak with Victoria privately. Call ye services. Nicky, Nick and Victor are still discussing their ordeal. Nicky feels bad about sinking into this nightmare and dragging everyone along with her. Victor believes that if anyone is to blame, it is him because of my past with Eve Howard. Nicky questions Jordan's claim that Claire is Victoria and Cole's daughter. Will Victoria ever forgive Claire? Victoria and Cole discuss the unpleasant circumstances that brought them together at society. She inquires as to how he arrived at the house. Cole claims he received a text from Nicky claiming Victoria was sick and needed him. Claire had her mother's phone, Victoria realises. She continues, we're talking around it, Cole. He is aware. We were so young, Victoria reflects. Eve was feeble and frailty. She needed to fight, but when she failed to arrive, Cole concludes, I don't think either of us were ever the same. Whatever closure they may have found over the years has now been shattered. Do you think it's possible that Claire is our daughter that we only thought we buried? Victoria wipes away tears. Sita Victoria Kolschistine tells Danny at the club that lunch was enjoyable and that she is looking forward to the release of his new record. What's it called, by the way? She asks if he can give her that song so she may listen to it again. Danny responds, Hawaii is on my mind. As Phyllis and Summer enter, Summer, like King Tastin Danny, Phyllis Billy tells Jill at Society that there have been issues at JBAT but Tucker is as much a threat to j as she believes Chancellor Winters is. Jill claims that Jack has Ashley and Kyle. I don't have anyone, she says. I need you, Billy. At the ranch, Nick believes a DNA test would be a good place to start. Nicky believes Victoria is in shock. Nick recalls how she and Cole had to say goodbye to their child. Nikki thinks that with Victor's lack of trust in her at Newman and this, it's enough to drive anyone insane. She casts a glance over at the vodka bottle. Cole wished he had answers at society. Jordan could be deceiving you. If Jordan's statements are accurate, Claire Grace may be their grown-up preterm baby. We need to find out one way or another, and I believe that starts with confronting Claire again.